This is Fancy Esk, and welcome back to Vampire Amazon with the Salazar Coven. When we left off in the previous episode, we were with Ursula's elite in the Salazar army, and pretty much seeing how their personalities unfold and whether or not they got along with each other. Well, since then we have returned back to the Royal Coven because we have a Royal Conception in store. So I am very excited about that. One of you lovely suggested that maybe Queen Athena should be the next one to get pregnant so that her child is close in age with Ursula and I think that is an absolutely excellent idea. So the Queen here has given one of the males in the Salazar army leave because she has picked him to be the one who she is going to conceive, hopefully her heiress with, and I am very excited, as I'm sure you guys are as well. But without further ado, let's jump into the episode. And as part of that, we know that we always have five sims in the coven when there is a pregnancy in line. So Freya has been the one to go over and visit Persephone at the Creature Cradle this time around. Um, previously we had Ursula, so we're going to be playing this entire pregnancy without the priestess in the coven, which is kind of sad because we do have a lot of things down here that we won't be able to access now that the priestess isn't here. But I'm sure the queen can give herself permission into this chambers and tend to a few things here. So I think in everyone's chambers, the only person allowed other than the person themselves is of course the queen and usually that's when whichever person is in charge of that area is out of the castle somewhere else. So the queen's going to be taking charge of these quarters and I will give her access. So allow access to Athena. There we go. We need to make sure the queen is able to get to these places because I don't want the plants we've been working on so hard to go ahead and die. That would be very sad. Also, some of you lovelies came up with a really cool idea, and we have a um, thirst problem over at the army, and I keep saying Melina's going to make potions, but then I keep forgetting, because every time we jump back with these ladies, we have other stories and other interesting things going on. So one of you lovelies said that, oh, why don't you make the alchemist's son join the army as an army alchemist? And he can take care of the potions and their needs over there. And I thought that was an absolutely awesome idea. And I've gone ahead and checked on Dwight's age. And Dwight is the son of Melina. He was born before Rose. He is still a teen, so he can't enter the army just yet. But when he becomes a young adult, then I think I'll definitely be moving him in as the ninth member of the army. Which should be pretty fun for us to play again when we are over there. So we'll have to put in a cauldron. I'll probably actually use the rooftop guys for the cauldron. I'll use the barracks rooftop for a cauldron and then that'll be his sort of area. So he can line up all his potions there and make things there and it'll be super cool. But okay, I think it is time that we took the queen to meet the male that she's going to be breeding with. Now, I wonder who you guys think she's going to be breeding with. I know Savi Lovely's asked as to whether the ladies will have access to the males in the army or if we're just going to have to um, pick the reserves, like whoever's currently in Willow Creek at that time and the submissions. But no, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we can pick whoever. We can pick from the army or we can pick from Willow Creek. Because at the end of the day, the, all the boys are from Willow Creek. And if someone is from the army that we've picked, then he's going to get special leave to go back home for the, the breeding for that episode. And then when that's done, he'll be sent back into the army. So no need. The, the places and positions won't be compromised by that. But okay, let's get Queenie over here to travel so we can see which male we are meeting. Obviously, the queen is not picking any of the Salazar brothers because they're related and they can't have a child together. That'll be awkward. And also, the game doesn't allow it. So, let's have a look. And the male that we are going to be going for, obviously none of these ones, is... Um, okay, so it's not these guys, not these guys, not these guys. I know one of you lovely said whether or not we should go for 
um, Branson doubles up because he's currently in the reserve, but no, not necessarily. We're going to be going for Benson Duntalopa, guys. Benson Duntalopa. I think that should be okay for us to go ahead and try for. I don't think the, que the queen and him are related. I'm pretty sure one of you told me a while back that if they're cousins, the game allows it. But if they're like half-siblings or something, then you can't. So I don't know if they are related. I don't think they are. It should be okay, though. It should be okay. So we're going to be going for Benson Duntalopa, everyone. And it looks as though he very strongly has... Um, he's got the Dantalopa features, but then he's also inherited some of the Dark Rana features, because I think his father was one of the Dark Rana boys. I don't remember which one. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, and here comes the queen, and it is winter over here. Does he have a scar on his face? No, that's just snow. Yeah, not snow, that's the, um, ah, vapors or whatever. Royal greeting. Let's go ahead and do that. And then you... Oh, she doesn't need to head inside, but we don't want him to die, so we'll probably take him inside. And look, that's his servant. That's his manservant. Oh, that was so sweet! That was a lovely interaction. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay. Let's go ahead and show off muscles. Oh, yes, of course. She would uh, show off her strength. And try and impress... Oh, well, she doesn't need to impress him, but... Tell an uh, unbelievable story. She doesn't need to impress him, but... Why don't we chat here? So that he can be out of the sun. Because I'm a bit worried about him. It is 8.20am. So, come on, let, let's head over over there. Away from all of this light. Now, the queen's not threatened by it. But, uh, yeah. I love how there's a love heart at the back of her dress, like, at the bottom. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, is he heading on inside? Well, I think a vampiric entrance is in order, everyone. There we go. So, Queen can use her powers to enter any space. She can do the same to the old castle. She can enter the uh, castle that is now abandoned in Brendleton Bay. But... I don't think she can take anything from there. Okay, we are going to share Vimperic knowledge, of course. I know what knowledge she's sharing with him. She's telling him, You have been given the responsibility to help me conceive an heir. <laughs> For the vampire nation. So, let's not dilly-dally and get to it. Okay, I think she should be able to do a few romantic things now. So, we're going to ask if single... And just go for the safe stuff. So flirts and complimenting appearances. And hopefully that goes well. She's a queen. She should have a lot of charisma. Mm, mm, mm. Oh no, don't you dare head off to work. Don't you dare. Oh, he's unflirty? Okay, well it seems as though we're doing pretty good for an unflirty sim. Hopefully the fact we're a monarch is getting through his head. I did not realize he was unflirty. Wow. I guess the queen would have fun with a difficult conquest. Okay, we want to keep this going. We don't want to complain about anything. Not the most regal of places to conceive a royal child, but the ladies have never been one to um, nitpick on those things. As long as the job gets done. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't head off. Don't head off. Don't you dare head off. Seriously, don't you dare head off. I don't care if you have somewhere to go. You are not going there. I mean, he's dressed up, and I'm kind of concerned that he might have had to go to work, but hopefully that's the case. Oh, look at them, look at them. Okay, he has sharp ears, which is great news. He's got beautiful face, lovely features. I think they'll have an adorable child. Also, he's got blue eyes, so... Uh, Athena's eyes are going to be passed on to their child as well. And I'm, I'm fairly sure Athena has sharp ears. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. It's a requirement. It's a royal requirement. You at least have to have sharp ears, if not um, the eyes. So, look at her. She's pretty adorable as well. She looks pretty. She's got the features. I know you guys uh, say that Freya looks prettier than Athena, and I actually agree. I think a lot of the ladies look prettier than Athena, but Athena is not 
unattractive. She is attractive. It's just the other ladies are like super attractive. <laughs> but I think they will make an adorable child. So let's go ahead. Okay, let's wrap this up. How's he feeling? He's feeling good? Is he feeling good? Things are steamy. Okay, things are steamy. Um, hmm. We'll try flirting a little bit more. And we'll try complimenting his appearance a little bit more. I'm scared to try something uh, different with an unflirty sim. I don't know how he'll take it. Oh, it's training day, is it? Oh, is it coming soon? Training day? Probably. Nope, you're not going to work. You have more important things to do right now. We might have to try something a little bit extra. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Kiss in the snow? Oh, that's so sweet. I didn't realize that was a thing. No. Okay. This is cute. I don't ship them, but this is cute. <laughs> okay. Have we still not... <laughs> Come on. Please. How have we not reached... Oh, come on. Maybe do a suave kiss. And hopefully that doesn't just butcher everything you worked so hard for. I think that... Oh, because he's unflirty, their romance meter is going down so slowly. I think that's what's happening. Okay. He liked that. He liked that. Well, Oh, thank goodness. Finally. Okay. Here we go, guys. Here we go. We're hoping for a princess. An heiress, no less. Okay, Benson. I think you guys will be happy about this. I know, like, when we had the very first episode, um, someone suggested that we breed Benson with one of the ladies. I don't remember which lady you wanted me to breed Benson with, but here we go. Benson's here. And he's with the ladies. He's with the queen. Of all the ladies, he's with the queen. So there we go. Okay. Who is his servant, by the way? His servant is Tori Langston. So this is the guy that pretty much takes care of all these estates, which is not a huge amount. And we're just going to ignore any pieces of technology we come across. But he's basically t in charge of taking care of this place while Benson is in the army. And Queenie, you don't need to pick up the phone or anything. I think we are fine. Look at how this place is freezing over. That looks so pretty. Looks cool. Looks fascinating. And I haven't really seen Willow Creek in winter. I don't really pay attention to it in winter or anything. I mean, we spend so much time in all the other places. But it is, it's fascinating. Very fascinating. Okay, let's go take the test and see whether or not she's pregnant. Oh, this is so exciting. So exciting. Okay, let's have a look, Queenie. We rarely see her in a sleeping um, attire because she's always drinking the potions and so her energy's up and she doesn't have any to sleep. Yes! Okay! Athena is expecting. Wonderful. We can take her back to the castle. Benson has done a good job, but we'll have to see whether or not he's done a great job when they have the trial. <laughs> we will have to see. Okay, and I think the queen is set to go to um, her duties. Now she has to go complete her duties around the queendom. And she is never, ever, ever going to see Benson Duntalopa again. Now, out of curiosity, I want to see if there is a relation between them. So, no, she is not related to them, obviously, but if we go to Freya, Freya's not related either. Mm. Who was it that had... Was it Freya or was it someone else? Hmm. I don't think it's going to keep track of the... Males? Freya, I think, is cousins with Benson. I think Freya is cousins with Benson. But Benson probably won't have, like, won't know her, I think. Because now their fathers aren't in the world anymore, I don't know if the game keeps track of that bloodline. Like, the females, they probably do, but maybe not the males. So the queen's heading off to work. 
and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I know some of you lovelies are also worrying about the honor grounds and whether or not we're going to have enough space for deceased ladies in the future, like we'll run out of space in the graveyard, but that's fine, and you're thinking of whether I should go ahead and actually destroy the graves of the generation 1 ladies to make space for the generation 3 ladies and I don't think that's a measure I'm going to be taking just yet I haven't had an issue with space and it's okay we've got so much land that I don't use anyways because they just don't serve a purpose in the story just yet I feel as though I can always replicate or duplicate the honor grounds and place them in different lots throughout different worlds and I think we'll have plenty of space to make sure we can continue storing the ladies somehow and if it becomes a, a problem where we can't have like graveyards for the ladies, if we reach a stage where we have just so many ladies, then instead of having graveyards, I'm just gonna stop kind of um, placing them in displays in their urns. So I will start doing that um, if it becomes too much of a problem. But okay, Queenie, let's let's go back home. She is trying. It's taking a little bit. She wants to run inside, but no. We have to go. You have work in the queendom, and damn, the winter must be harsh here. Maybe these ladies aren't really used to the winter. Oh, actually, no. They grew up in winter, though. They grew up in winter. Because Brindleton Bay does have snow and everything. Hmm. But I guess they've been staying in the desert for so long. They're probably used to desert life and desert air. That kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. I bet their children will be a little bit spoiled in terms of that. They're constantly like in a warm, a hot environment. But I think it should be okay. I mean, they obviously will have some... They don't have air conditioners and crap because technology! But they probably will have some sort of magic that keeps the air cool or something like that. I'm sure they'd have things like that in play. Okay, the queen is off to work and we can pretty much focus. Looks as though Rose is off doing her own thing. Uh, in the Alchemist Academy, and we can focus on the ladies, seeing what they get up to. Hmm, okay, well, is anyone wanting a drink? Nope, not exactly. Melina, let's take this opportunity to discard content and make some more potions. Since Rose is out, this is a great time for you to be able to use the um, cauldron. Because I want Rose to be training as well. However, if Rose is on the cauldron, then Melina can't be on the cauldron. So I think since Rose is out, I should probably spend some time getting all of that together and done. And uh, I just feel like we need more potions. And we've been using a lot of potions, but we don't have a whole heap of potions. So potions, potions, potions. Let's get more potions done. Okay. She think, uh, she think, I think she needs cherries for the alluring aura so we can have the queen's potion party, but... We haven't managed to get any cherries just yet. Gonna have to figure out how we can acquire them. I'm pretty sure there was a cherry tree in Brindleton Bay, like behind the castle. So let's brew. Plentiful needs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was a cherry tree. So you know what? If the. Because we do have a cherry downstairs. Mm. We have a cherry tree here that hasn't. Ah, I'm born as any fruit yet. So, I don't know if that's an if it's a if it's glitching or what's happening because all the other plants are giving me fruit unless that takes a long time, but that's not. Literally every other plant is giving me fruit. So, you know what we might actually do is I might send Melina. Yeah, I might send Melina to go to Brindleton Bay so we can access the cherry trees behind the old castle. And then she can try and grab that. I think that might be cool. And she's getting very close to the end of her life. It's kind of scary, it's kind of sad, but I feel even more pressure to get Rose trained um, before that happens. But damn, when and if it does, it's going to be our very first natural death that's ever happened in this series. Like in the uh, coven. Let's bottle all of these up. And yes, you are hungry again. But let's bottle these up. And then you can go find something to eat. And Rose came back. That's perfect timing. Okay, now you can head off and do what you want. 
And while you do that, I'll just stock up the potions. Okay. Let's stock up a potion there. And another one here. And then I think we will go over to... Hold on a second. <clears throat> uh, back to this side. Yep, we'll stock up all these spots. Potion up there. Potion down here. Over there. There we go. I have a few more potions. We just need to make sure, like, if every day we can do at least one batch of these potions, then our stores will be pretty good. Pretty good. I think I feel safer knowing that we have potions on at least three different, like, shelves. Like, right now, we have it on three different shelves. That makes me feel safe. You know, I feel like it's a good amount. Okay. She's eating over here some food that I think was in the larder. Okay, and Rose, you are also hungry, and she's eating popcorn, of course she is. I'll let her eat then. Nymphadora is fine. Oh, Queenie has returned. Good, good, good. Queen has returned, and Ursula. I think I should be able to get everyone's whims down. So let's see what everyone would like to get up to. And some of them will have to work around the duties they need to get done. But others, we'll see. Um, make a friend. Yeah, okay, she wants to make a friend. So it seems as though Rose has realized, oh, maybe I need to start making alliances in the flippin' coven, you know? If I keep making enemies with everyone for the sake of my mother, uh, even though I love my mother and she'll probably still do that with Ursula, if I keep making enemies, it's not gonna be good for me when she leaves eventually. So I think she's realized that. We're gonna have to find who she has the closest relationship to. Currently, oh, goodness gracious, she's got a slight, slight... Um, I think the queen doesn't dislike her, but the queen disapproves of her. So, there we go. She seems to have the closest relationship with Nymphadora. So I think she's gonna wanna try to make friends with her before long. But also, maybe be become friends with her mother. Because she actually does not have a friendship with her mother. And I wonder why that is. Hmm. I hope she doesn't become distanced from her. Ooh, that would be so sad. That would be so sad after everything they've been through. That would be atrocious. Okay, Nymphadora. Um, challenge someone to don't play Wake the Llama. To play don't Wake the Llama, sorry. Yeah, okay, so she obviously wants to spend some time with someone, get to know them a little bit better, have fun. We can get that arranged. The queen would like to go for a flight. We can also get that arranged. She's training. Look at her, even though she's expectant. Ursula, what would you like to do? Go for a jog. Um, might have to wait till night time before that happens, though. What's this? Critique. You know what? Yeah. She may, she wants to critique something. I guess we can get her to critique something. And Melina would like to take a nap. Oh, because she's lazy. She's tired. She wants to take a nap. Okay, honey. I'll try and get that arranged. But first, you need to make some deliveries to the Queen and to Nymphadora. So let's go ahead and grab some potions. So we can deliver them to the queen. So we'll take one and two. And that should be good. And the queen's not going to make any sort of formal announcement. Like, she doesn't have to report to anyone. Normally when someone gets pregnant, they come and report to the queen that they've successfully conceived. But the queen doesn't have to because, duh, she's the queen. But also because, um, I think she would have made an announcement before she left. Like a huge one, like, oh, I'm going to go conceive. And so, I'm sure the ladies wouldn't make too much of a fuss about it. Okay, Nymphadora, let's deliver a potion to her. Um, potion. Nice. Okay. I feel like she gets most of it exercised literally from running around and delivering potions. Otherwise, I feel like she just wouldn't bother at all. She still doesn't. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of a good thing. But... Once um, Rose starts doing this, I think it'll be good. She might be able to get off on the right foot with people if she starts doing this early. But then again, when you do give someone potions, it doesn't always mean that they'll take it positively. Sometimes they take it negatively. And I don't know what influences that. But that's fine, I guess. Like, I think Nymphadora will take it positively. Maybe it's depending on how close you are or something like that. Or maybe their personalities, I have no clue. 
Like, she takes it positively. Yeah, but some of the others, they, they really don't. Okay, Nymphadora, let's get you to drink. And then we'll go to the queen. And queen, can you not go inside? We need to make a delivery to you, please. I'll make a delivery to the queen. And no, she decided to go inside. Darn it. Okay, queen. Go out there so that we can deliver stuff to you, please. And let's go do the delivery. And just stick here, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if there's anything that, um, like, I wonder if the roles they have, because the mod influences it so that someone walks to them instead of them walking to someone else. So, like, with the queen, Melina has to go search her out instead of the queen coming to Melina to go ahead and get her dose of potion. Which is interesting, yeah. Because they don't have to go to the alchemy tower to get a drink, like, to ask for a drink. Melina has to keep in check, or I guess they just send a, messen uh, a messenger or a message via bat to tell her that they are thirsty, they want to drink, and so Melina has to go then find them and actually deliver the potions in person. Look, I don't know if the queen's going to take this positively, because for some reason, some of the ladies don't. Is that good or is that bad? Is it going to be negative? Is it going to be positive? It's positive. I don't know. It really depends. Sometimes it's negative. Sometimes it's positive. And I'm not entirely sure why that is the case. But okay. She's going to grab herself a drink. Let's go drink, Queenie. There we go. Oh, jeez. Melina, what did you do? What did she do? Okay, so Nymphadora got a good potion. Something was wrong with the queen's potion. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's probably not the best thing. What if someone thinks they're trying to poison the queen when she's pregnant? Or make him have like um, a miscarriage. Oh my goodness. Melina, you could get killed. Oh wow. Okay. Well, her needs are crappy. But her thirst is in the green. So really, she doesn't need a potion right now. And she's just going to have to find some way to deal with herself. But I'm going to take her to tend to her needs in her flippin' royal chamber. So let's get her to take a rose petal bath. Hopefully that gets her in a good mood. And then she might want to just go sleep. I think. Or well, not sleep, but get her, like, do a meditation. Do a dark meditation. I think that's what she's going to want to do. Yeah. No oh, goodness, Melina, you really are going downhill. It is a wonder she hasn't been killed yet. But I think we all know the reason. It's because Rose um, doesn't know enough, is not trained enough to take over her responsibilities just yet. But I love the Queen's Bath. It looks so pretty. I just love it. It looks so pretty. Okay, she's going to take her Rose Petal Bath. I just love this little space she's got going on over here. We don't see her in her room enough. But look at what an adorable place it is. Like, imagine having a room like this. I would be bowling. I would be so happy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so she is going to kind of relax and deal with some of her own issues. I don't know if this constitutes as fun, but I guess we'll leave it to it. Rose is sleeping. Nymphadora wants to challenge someone. Hmm. And she's currently talking to Ursula. So who is she going to challenge if she's talking to Ursula? She's friends with Ursula, not with Melina. Maybe she'd want to play with... Yeah, she's really got the royal sisters on her side. Look at that. I knew she was close to Athena, not to Freya, but she really has the royal sisters on her side. Maybe Ursula? I think Nymphadora is smart enough to realize there's a trifecta going on, and she needs to go ahead and make sure that the trifecta is on her side. So, I guess let's go and see if we can get Ursula to join us in a game downstairs. So, let's challenge Ursula. There we go, since she is in our vicinity at this stage. Here we go. And then I'll go play off together and bond. <laughs> so, there we go. I think the fire incident is at the back of their minds at this stage. 
Oh yeah, you guys were saying, you guys were saying that in the uh, last time we played with these ladies, Ursula went back to the, um, here, which you can still see it's in ashes and crap and it hasn't been cleaned up just yet. But he was saying that Ursula came back here to investigate who is he lost and why the fire went off. And if she finds out that it was Rose, well, there could be an issue brewing in the future. I don't know, but we will have to see. It was all very dramatic, but that was a cool idea, and I really liked the fact that I guess she was here to investigate what the heck was happening. But anyways, guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.